Welcome to the Sales Factory Live every Monday at 4 p.m. right here on Facebook. You can catch it over on the YouTube channel, post production, and listen to it on your favorite podcast station, maybe over on iTunes or Stitcher or SoundCloud. We're everywhere that you can get your earbuds rocking. Uh, pretty excited to have my man Tom uh, with me today on uh, the Sales Factory. If you go down to the coffee shop and ask the, the guys at the coffee shop what age you to drive your Social Security benefits, they're going to say age 62. You know, this place is going broke, get the getting while the getting's good. But 62 isn't the right answer. We're going to talk a little bit about his story, uh, you know, his biggest breakthrough that he had, kind of get into a little bit of his passion, his why, and, and what he does. This guy's speaks all over the place. So uh, we actually reached out to him, I think it was a couple months ago even. And uh, they're like, look, man, this guy is just, he's on the road. He's speaking at a lot of different conferences and seminars. So uh, we had to book it out far, but I'm really ex excited. Uh, as you guys know, as my audience, I'm a public speaker as well. So I'm very passionate. I look up to these guys that have been in the game for a while. Um, and I know there's certainly a lot of things that I'm going to learn from Tom today. So without further ado, bring Tom on. Tom, welcome to the Sales Factory, my man. Thanks, Coach. Great to be with you. Absolutely. Appreciate it, man. So why don't we uh, hop right in and, and tell the folks uh, a little bit about yourself and, and your background and, and how you got started and, and where you are today. Sure. So, I mean, I was born and raised in a small town in Minnesota. I went to college at North Dakota State University on an Army ROTC scholarship. I was commissioned in the military. I spent six years active duty, 16 and a half Army Reserve, retired as lieutenant colonel in 2006. I was in the insurance industry for about 25 years. I was uh, eight years with MetLife. I was an advisor. I was a manager. And I was a national marketing manager for their variable life product. Then I went over to New York Life. I spent 15 years with New York Life. I started out as an annuity wholesaler. I worked my way up to be a senior executive officer in the company. I then retired from New York Life in 2011, and I started my own business. I've written four books on retirement. Uh, I've spoken all over the world and I have a, a public TV special on PBS called Don't Worry, Retire Happy that has played in over 72 million homes in the U.S. and Canada. Wow. <laughs> so you've been a little busy, man. <laughs> so uh, w what made you want to get in uh, into the insurance industry? Well, what happened was when I was a company commander out of Fort Ord, California, there was a MetLife agent going through my unit uh, selling my soldiers whole life insurance. And at the time, I was a buy term invest the difference guy. And so I said, you know, who's this guy trying to rip off my soldiers, you know, bring him to me. And they said, well, he needs your, he needs your birthday. And I said, well, give my birthday, but bring him here. And so uh, I met with them. I said, you know, or what are you trying to rip off my soldiers? He said, no, I'm trying to protect them and build their retirements. And I said, well, let me see what you got. And he said, well, they gave me your birthday, so I ran an illustration with your name on it, and I'm looking at this thing, and it was, I mean, it totally changed my perception on life insurance, 180 degrees, and I said, you get paid to sell this stuff? He said, I get paid good to sell this stuff. I said, I can sell this stuff, and so that's kind of how it happened. Wow, that's awesome, man. And you know, I'm a I'm a huge proponent of life insurance. I've had life insurance since I was 21. Uh, very fortunate that my insurance agent uh, that I had cared enough to sit down and have that talk with me and and really explain it out because I think a lot of people do have um, that you know oh it's just a scam or it's not worth it. But I actually have whole life policies myself. And one of our um, we my my ad tech company Carol Media they work with uh, we work with State Farm agents a lot. And uh, Justin Cook is one of our good clients, and he is just you know always cranking out the life insurance because. He tells people, you know, it's 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 one of those things that you don't realize you need it until you need it, um, and it's it's one of the best ways to protect yourself. Is is one of your books? Uh, do, do you talk about more about using life insurance for like retirement planning and and into term planning, or or what's what's your books? Tell us a little bit more about those. Yeah, so my first book is a book by the name of Paychecks and Playchecks, and uh, that does have a good chunk of uh, information on life insurance. All my books do. My, my, my second book was Retirement Income Master, Secrets of the Pros. That's got a lot of life insurance ideas in there as well. As in, then uh, I did Paychecks and Playchecks for Canadians. That was my third book. And then my fourth one was uh, Don't Worry, Retire Happy, tied in with the PBS TV special. All three, all, all four of them, you know, really hit life insurance pretty hard because 
you know, I think people who don't like permanent life insurance, they don't understand it. They just think you're paying higher premiums for the same amount of coverage you can get for term. And you and I know that's very not true and that uh, a good whole life policy is a great bond substitute. It's a great wealth building tool. You're not going to get rich overnight, but it's like a freight train that the longer that thing goes, the more and more you can't even stop it. It starts, you know, pumping out so much cash. And so, yeah, I mean, the, the, the naysayers are the ones who really don't understand it. So, uh, so it sounds like you and I probably have a com common enemy then in Dave Ramsey. He's not a big fan of whole life insurance. <laughs> well, Dave, Dave Ramsey uh, should not be talking about life insurance annuities and long-term care because he just makes himself look foolish. You fool! I'm all for about getting out of debt and cutting up your credit cards. I'm all for that. But he is clueless when it comes to life insurance annuities and long-term care. I mean, I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> you know, and that's my big thing is, uh, you know, from a, being a business owner, uh, you know, my audience knows my story, but I'll tell you, like, I mean, I come from nothing, man. My, my parents carried engine parts out of the house that I was born into, um, you know, and after we moved out, they demoed the house. And uh, knowing that, you know, I started my first business $300, like I had to use debt, had to use credit cards and leverage. And I, I really think Dave Ramsey for entrepreneurs, like that's my biggest like, oh, when, a, when a, a startup entrepreneur comes to me and is looking for help and, you know, like, hey, man, what do I do? And he's like, I've been listening to Dave Ramsey. I'm not supposed to take any debt. And I'm like, listen, man, the business world doesn't necessarily work that way. Uh, I think Dave just kind of casts that broad net. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I think it misguides a lot of people. Um, let's talk about just tell me tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, you kind of had that moment where. You, you saw somebody and, and they, they kind of introduced that, that life insurance to you. But um, what, what was really your breakthrough when you said, Hey man, I, I can make something of this. I think this is going somewhere. And, and maybe it, maybe it's the, the breakthrough that you had from going to selling life insurance to more in your speaking career. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I think, you know, there's certain people that have a huge impact on you. And, and uh, I know when I was at MetLife, uh, Joe Jordan had an impact on me, Ted Kuski. Uh, Gary Kinder, the Kinder Brothers. I mean, I, I literally learned a business from the Kinder Brothers. So they had a huge impact and allowed me to kind of fast track my way to the top. Um, but then when I was at New York Life, a big breakthrough for me is uh, when I I got asked to speak at the uh, Boomer Retirement Roadshows. Now, this was back in 2008, 2009. The market was, was, was literally crashing and uh, people didn't know what to do. I mean, Mohammed El Arian calls his wife and says, get all the money out of the bank because ATMs aren't ever going to work again. I mean, he's one of the smartest guys in the world. And I mean, everybody was scared. And uh, I came out with this message of, you know, guaranteed lifetime income and you've got to cover your basic living expenses. Anyway, I delivered a very powerful message to uh, these five roadshows around the country. And there were people there from MDRT and they said, man, we got to get this guy at MDRT. And then I spoke at top of the table which is their top shelf. I, I did that in 2009 in Kauai. And then they invited me to speak main platform at the MDRT meeting in 2010 in Vancouver. And so those things really launched me significantly into the speaking arena and, and broader than New York life because I was speaking in front of all these different companies. And then when I went on my own in 2011, I already built a bit of a brand. And so I was able to to immediately go out and make traction in the industry. You know, and that's, uh, I'll touch on something there. I always talk about building personal brand and, you know, with social media and stuff nowadays, it's so easy because you're right. I mean, 20 years ago, the only way you could really get notoriety is either to break through in some form of publication, either like on, on television, news stations, radio, something like that. Uh, but now, I mean, we literally have this device right here where you can hold it up and press record and you can be in front of thousands and thousands of people. Um, so what's, and you said uh, one, sorry, I had to ask a clarification. Did you say NBRT? No, MDRT, Million Dollar Roundtable. That's Oh, that's Million Dollar Roundtable. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I was <laughs> from the top of the table and then at their Million Dollar Roundtable annual meeting where they have thousands of people. Okay. Very cool, man. Very cool. So that was kind of your your change there. And so was it was it something um, that you were passionate about speaking and, and, and that's why you pursued it? Or was it just kind of something that fell in your lap and made sense money wise? Well, what happened is when I was at New York Life, I was kind of in charge of their retirement income 
push. They were the first company to really get into the retirement income and the guaranteed lifetime income products. And I think they still have about a 40, 42% market share, which is unheard of in the insurance industry. But I, I trained every single New York Life agent, every single New York Life manager, every single New York Life wholesaler. And I learned a lot of stuff there that nobody knew about, you know, these mortality credits and longevity credits and why you get why longevity risk. It's not just a risk, it's a risk multiplier. And so I learned a lot of stuff and I was able to take that and and put it into a book and, and put it into presentations and, and take it out to the industry. Nice. Very cool, man. And so would you say that your true passion is speaking or what? I mean, what do you, what are you passionate about? What, what makes you wake up in the morning? Well, I mean, I'm trying to help 78 million baby boomers not run out of money and a whole bunch of them will run out of money if they don't get the message. So, you know, they think that, you know, if they have a 60, 40 portfolio in retirement, they're going to be fine. And I, I got to tell them, you're not going to be fine. You're going to be dead broke with a 60, 40 portfolio in retirement. So they don't understand that the distribution phase is very different than the accumulation phase. And that's, you know, so, you know, it's not a bad place to be when you're kind of considered the retirement income guy when there's 78 million baby boomers who need retirement income. So that's kind of what I do. <laughs> nice. Yeah. My, uh, my dad worked for the city of Indianapolis for 30 gosh, I think 32 years um, and took, you know, his early retirement, but paid in and everything. And then I always say that he bought the 1950s dream of like, get the job, buy the house, work really, really hard. And then you can just go retire to a beach. And, right. uh, you know, now he's looking, he was telling me, you know, hey, man, I, I might move down to Louisville. He lives in Indianapolis still. He's like, I might move down to Louisville next year once my, my Social Security kicks in. And I'm like, well, that how much money are we really talking here, right? You know, I'm, I'll be 30 in June, so I'm, I'm like at the opposite end of the spectrum. And how much money are we really talking, man? Like, you work for the city of Indianapolis for 30 years, like, you got like pension retirement should be good, right? He's like, Oh, with my retirement and social security after taxes, he's like, I'll be taking home around $2,400 a month. And I'm like, Wait, what? You know, for me, and you know, I get it's retirement, but I'm thinking like five or six grand, maybe like. 2400 bucks a month man you make your bills you know your house payment your your utilities your car payment your insurance buy a little bit of food and then wait it out until next month it sounds like are you seeing a lot of people running into that oh and and he's probably way better off than many so wow you know, what 40 or 50 percent of all people have saved zero money so far i mean how are you going to retire you you know and people have no idea in this low interest rate environment how it's caused them to need to save more money and then have larger life insurance policies. And I, I always tell people stuff like this, in a 1% interest rate environment, we're basically in a 1% interest rate environment. How much money does it take to provide 50,000 of income? $5 million, <laughs> you know, even in a 5% interest rate and we're not, but if we were in a 5%, it takes 1 million for every 50,000. So that means a million of life insurance for every 50,000, a million invested for every 50,000 in, in income and retirement. So people have no idea. How much money they're going to need? Yeah, absolutely, man. That's uh, you know my my crowd's more entrepreneurs, and while I have a life insurance and all that kind of stuff, I had a Roth IRA for a while, and you know I watched that thing in the market, and for about four and a half years, I kept making monthly payments, and the the guy that was managing it kept taking his piece, but after four and a half years, you know it was it was down a half a percent. And I took that cash out, you know, paid the penalty, but I went and flipped the house in a matter of about eight and a half weeks and made 30 grand off of it. And that was the thing for me. You know, I really pushed my people to, to real estate because, you know, it provides that, that passive amount of income. But I think the overlying point here is that no matter what you do, uh, either, you know, building a business, building a real estate portfolio, or, you know, if you have a job, just make sure that, that you're planning for that. Um, I always like to say the solution is always more money. Just go make more money. But uh, I know obviously that's not always a solution for everyone. Um, but yeah, man, good stuff. Good stuff there. What do you think is uh, the, the biggest lesson that you've gotten so far on success? Well, I'm, I try to be the hardest worker I know. I've always worked hard and that that's always done well by me. So, I mean, I, if you follow me on Facebook, you won't find anybody who travels more than me or works longer hours, I don't think. So, I mean, I, I just have a work ethic that has done me very well. And then if you have the right knowledge and you can communicate and present that, and if you can present it in written form in books and in an audio form with audiobooks and in DVDs. So I've got a whole product suite. I've got, you know, presentation slides. I've got white papers. So I, I try to provide 
for financial advisors, all the tools they're going to need with their clients. So first yeah. of all, I try to educate the financial advisors. Then I give them the tools that they can educate their clients. And it's it's been working out pretty well. Yeah, I was looking at your website uh, before the call. And uh, I, you know, from a, a coach standpoint, it's, it's so cool because, you know, there's tons of coaches out there, but everyone kind of has the successful ones that I've found they kind of have their own niche that they they go into. And so like you're in those financial advisors. And that's one thing that I don't think I've ever seen before to, uh, before looking at your website is the slide decks that you had put together. So are, are those for like the financial advisors to buy and then to, uh, to have that to go through it with their clients? Is that what that's for? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I offer them the same slides I use to train them, the same slides that I do public seminars all over the world. I, so that they can buy the same slides with my script, my words. Now I put in a lot of extra slides, you know why? Because everybody likes to do things a little different and I know they don't wanna do it exactly the way I do it, but I give them my exact deck and then I give them a whole bunch of extra slides that they can go deeper into life insurance or annuities or long-term care or social security maximization or, or inflation protection or the risks in retirement. So I give them a whole bunch of extra slides because people like to build their own presentations. Right. Man, I, I think that's cool. Uh, I I really don't think I've seen that anywhere else, uh, and that, and that's that's pretty that's that's a huge benefit I can see to your clients as financial advisors. Um, let me let me ask you something. This is just for my own personal uh, preference. How do you manage such a um, such a packed speaking schedule. Cause as a, you know, that's ultimately my goal is, you know, I want to be out there sharing my message with, with entrepreneurs and business owners. Um, in, in, you know, those could be financial advisors and insurance agents, really anybody that's a small service business owner is kind of who I, I work with personally. How, how do you keep that schedule? Uh, can you give us a couple of your secrets? Yeah. I mean, I, I always tell people it's in my calendar. Once it's in my calendar, I'm going to be there. I can't call mom and say, you know, I really don't feel like coming to it. And so once it's in the calendar, I'm going to go. And that's by utilizing right there a calendar. Now I have no employees, which is a lot of, it's hard for people to believe I have zero employees, but I hire a company that does everything for me. And, and Robbie Roussel, everybody knows Robbie's my right hand guy. He runs that company. So he, he books all my travel. Uh, he runs the warehouse that ships all my books and all my audiobooks. books. Uh, he schedules all my events. He does all the contracting. He so he runs. Every, I, I do the speaking. That's what I do. I say, Robbie, I do this and I'm going to do it. You know, as long as I hit it on the park every time, everything else works. But I got to have a plane ticket. I got to have a hotel. I got to have a rental car. My books got to get there. You know, my social media has to be, you know, fed. And so so they do all my back office stuff, everything. Run the wow. work, get the books, the schedule. You know, they do everything. And so I just do that. I speak and I travel. That's what I do. That's cool, man. Now, does Robbie take on other clients? <laughs> yeah, he does. He's He's got several and and uh, he's always looking for new clients. And, he, and he's, he runs a first class operation. He can even publish. So like. He publishes my books now. I used to use a different publisher. So he publishes the books. We got printers. We got, you know, we, we found the cheapest way to mail everything to any. You tell me where in the country and I can tell you the cheapest way to ma mail it from our warehouse. So they've got the, the shipping down to a science, the publishing, the editing, everything. So, I mean, um, yeah. He, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's that's huge, man, because I, I know that's that's the biggest thing for me is like, you know, I get overwhelmed trying to manage all stuff. And, you know, delegation, I, I, I preach this until I'm blue in the face to entrepreneurs is that you have to find and, and it's not just entrepreneurs. I think it's every role in the company has to be this way. You have to find your superpower and then do that and only that and then delegate everything else out. Um, that's obviously easier said than done, but uh, I think a lot of times the the business owner, the entrepreneur, they become the bottleneck, and then they want to look at their P and L and say, "Well, why am I not making the money I want to make, or why am I not growing as fast as I want to grow?" And a lot of times, they just need to take a good hard look in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, and so Robbie does all that. He's he's got all the employees. He's got he does all that. I do what I do, and but all the back office stuff, that's what he does. And I. Wow. I write a check to his operation every month. Very cool. Robbie, I'm going to be sending you an email. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's get into our fire round here. Um, basically, these are your favorite things, Tom. Uh, and so I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five questions. So first off is your favorite business book that's not your book. 
Yeah, so, I mean, a book that had a huge impact on me was uh, Think and Grow Rich. I mean, that really, when I was very young in the business, it taught me to think different and that, that you can become successful just by changing your mind and that most people sabotage themselves by thinking negative or I can't do this or I can't. No, you can, but are you going to? And are you going to come up with a plan? And what are you going to do? And so Think and Grow Rich for sure had a big impact on me. And then there's been other, you know, books in our industry you know, some of the Ben Feldman and his son, Marv Feldman, have, have some great books. And, and uh, so, I mean, but I, for me, it was the Kinder Brothers videos and audios and, and listening to some of the top producers in this industry. I learned their words, their language, their stories that then became my words, my language, my stories. And they literally fast tracked me to the top. Look, I moved to Arizona. I didn't know one person in the whole state and I'd never sold any insurance or anything like that. And I and I led my office in production every year. I made I qualified for the million dollar round table, which is the top one percent. I did that in my first year. Now, how do you do that if you don't know anything about nothing? It's because I listened and I learned. And those people fast tracked me to the top. And that's what I'm telling advisors. I can fast track them to the top. You know, why does the army have me take apart and put together my weapon four thousand times? I think I figured it out after six or eight times. But after six or eight times, you know it up here. After 4,000 times, you know it down here. So I'm a big believer in repetition, audiobooks, listening, learning, you know, having a coach, you know, whether you're a coach or who's a coach. Everybody needs a coach. Pros have coaches. Amateurs don't. That's what I would say. <laughs> that, absolutely, man. I couldn't agree more. And, th and Think and Grow Rich, uh, I had a guy, I was in Detroit last week speaking to a, about a group of 80 small business owners. And a guy came up and he said, DJ, I just want to thank you. Um, not because you you taught me how to sell or you taught me anything. He's like, more than anything, man, you've changed my mindset. And, and that was one of my points in my talk. I said, you can't control anything of this world until you control your mind. Uh, and I think Napoleon Hill, man, and, you know, I'm trying to be those, uh, you know, I think some of those guys that came before us and that, you know, I, I still consider selling personal development, really, because it's communication. But, you know, I think some of those personal development greats, man, in my generation as millennials, um, I think it's going by the wayside. So I, anytime I can push people into thinking grow rich or outwitting the devil, any Napoleon Hill stuff is is solid. Um, so you travel a lot, man. What's your favorite place to travel to? Oh, uh, you know, I, I really like them all. There were a couple of sleeper cities when I first started doing it. San Antonio and the Riverwalk. That is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Baltimore, the harbor on a sunny day. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. I love um, Montana and Wyoming. So, I mean, you know, I mean, I like to go skiing. So in the winter, I like to go in some of those places. We like the ocean and the beach. And then I like to play golf. And Scottsdale's not a bad place for that. So I hang out here a lot. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, how about your favorite charity to give to? Uh, smile train. Uh, I, I just, I get pulled by seeing those kids with those cleft palettes and it's just, um, I'm a president circle giver with them. And then we tie to our church and stuff, but I, but a smile train, um, in fact, I got a picture right over on my desk. I'm looking at it right now. And I just, those, those little kids tug at my heart a little bit. It's cool, man. I think, I think that, uh, you know, I've got four hashtags that I always talk about. It's dream more, be more, do more, and then give more. And the last one, give more, I think is those are the four things that you have to do in my mind to really truly be a successful entrepreneur. And, you know, it, you can, you can have this, this luxurious career, but uh, I truly believe that the whole point of that, while we're so blessed as business owners, or if you're, if you're fortunate enough to make a lot of money in life is that, you know, leave, leave the place better than you found it. You know, your, our moms taught us that when we were little. And I think a lot of people forget that when they get out in the real world. So I always like to ask the charity. It's very cool. Um, I'll tell Andy to, to put a link down in the YouTube video. when We post this up on uh, YouTube for, for that charity for you. Um, so so let's see. How old are you, Tom? I'm 56. 56. So uh, my question is normally where you see yourself in 10 years. Do you think you'll be retired? Or is this something that you'll just keep chugging away on, man, because you because you love speaking and traveling so much? I mean, you know, when you're a speaker, you could I could cut my days down and I could just do this for, you know, 20, 30 more years. And I'm not going to say I won't do that, but that's not where I see myself. I really I wrote the book. Don't worry. Retire happy. And I, I live what I talk and I. I've got enough guaranteed income that anytime I want, I can, I can go off into the sunset if I want to. It's just, we'll see. I mean, yeah. um, 
I got at least a couple more years in me. And, and I just, you know, I, I lost one of my best friends this year. He was 56, died of a heart attack. And then I've got, I just had lunch yesterday with one of my bosses at uh, MetLife and he's got Parkinson's. Uh, he's had heart issues. He, he can, he can't walk very good. And he's and he got a chronic back problems. He's only in his sixties and his retirement is nothing, nothing like what they planned. You know, they planned this big retirement and now, you know, he, he can barely get around and wow. he won the golf championship at his golf course, you know, several times he can't even pick up a club. I mean, so I watched, I watched this with some people close to me and I've just said, you know, do I really want to be one of these guys that works till they're 80 and then they drop dead or do I want to get a few good years in of travel and do some things? So I, I really do think I'm going to retire and be happy, but we'll see. That's cool, man. Yeah, I know when you're when you're a hustler, I, I, and I I love that. I can just feel that. I watched a couple of your videos. Your your work ethic is is really strong, and I've always I've always said that's what's kept me going. Um, and so last lastly, let's talk about how can people reach you. Um, obviously, we'll link you up. Uh, I've got you tagged here in uh, the Facebook uh, post, so people can go find your page there. But uh, any other ways? What's your website? Yeah, I mean, TomHegna.com is pretty easy to find if you Google my name. I've got YouTube videos. I've got, I'm on Amazon, but uh, TomHegna.com, it's got all our products and our training and our coaching and everything. Very cool. Very cool, man. All right. Well, Tom, hey, I really appreciate you coming on today. Uh, any any last words before we go? Well, I appreciate it, Coach, and I, I, I hope people are watching your show and, and taking your advice because you've got a lot of wisdom and and I think people need to learn from others, other, you know, learn from other people's mistakes. Don't just make you, you can make all your own mistakes, but if you learn from other people's mistakes, you're going to get better faster. Absolutely. I had I had somebody tell me um, when when I decided not to, to go to college and start my first business. They said, DJ, don't you know, all businessmen have huge failures in their life. And I was like, you know, man. I feel like business is kind of like walking through a minefield and instead of me just closing my eyes and trying to run across it as fast as possible, I'm going to go seek out some guys that's been in the game for a while and say, Hey bro, where's those mines out there? And then tiptoe my way around it. And, you know, I've had a couple of, couple of losses and I don't ever, I don't ever consider them failures as long as you learn something from them. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Books, uh, video trainings, audio books. We live in the information era. Uh, information's at our fingertips. There's no reason to have to make huge mistakes anymore. So, so good, good chat there, man. Appreciate you, Tom. Uh, everybody, go follow my man, Tom Hegna. If you got any questions, drop them down in the comment, and uh, and we'll make sure that either they get over to Tom or uh, sounds like they might get to Robbie uh, first. But uh, uh, Tom, really appreciate you having uh, having the time set aside to to come on the Sales Factory with us. Thanks, Coach. All right. See you guys next week.